Hi there. In this video, we'll be talking about the six prefixes that you need to know for National 5 Physics. I'll also be showing you how to enter those numbers into your calculator using this button here, the times 10 to the power of x button. Now, what are prefixes? Well, I'll be showing you all six of them later, but just an example with very large numbers. Let's say I had a resistance of this value here. 47000000 ohms or 4,700,000 ohms. Instead of having to write all of those different numbers, it's going to take a long time. I could express that resistance as 4.7 mega ohms. Now, if you don't know the prefixes yet, don't worry if this doesn't make sense. The main thing is that, as I said, it's an efficient way of writing very large numbers, very small numbers. And here's a very small number. So this is a current in this case. 0.0000000032 amps. A more efficient way of writing that would be 3.2 nanoamps. Nano is another one of these prefixes that we'll need to actually memorize, as well as mega and another four. So what are the six prefixes? Well, the problem is in National 5 Physics, you're given all the relationships within the relationship sheet. There's also a data sheet that you can refer to that'll tell you the speed of light and air and so on and so forth. But the prefixes need to be memorized. And here they are. So there are six of them, three for large numbers, three for small numbers, and they look like so. So first off, we have giga, which is written as a capital G, and that represents times 10 to the power of nine. Next off, we have mega, which is written as a capital M times 10 to the power of six. And we then have kilo written as a small lowercase k, and that's times 10 to the power of three. These ones, I would imagine, if you're into computing, then you'll have heard of kilobytes, megabytes, gigabytes, may even have heard of terabytes and petabytes and so on and so forth. So those are the large numbers. For the other three, we have milli, which is written as a small lowercase m, which is times 10 to the minus three, we have micro, which is written, this is a Greek letter, uh, mu, and that represents times 10 to the power of negative six. And then we have nano, and that's a lowercase n, and that represents times 10 to the negative nine. Now, please spend some time memorizing those. There will be another video, in fact, where I'll give you a chance to work through some questions in order to try and memorize these. So there'll be questions using all six prefixes. And if you work your way through those, get your calculator out and actually give them a go, then hopefully by the end, you'll have a better memory, I guess, a better, not understanding, but you can memorize these. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some example questions using these prefixes and show you how to actually enter them into your calculator. Here's the first one here. So the question says, calculate the voltage across the 3.0 kilo ohm resistor when the current in the circuit is 2.0 milliamps. Now, don't worry too much if you don't know which equation to use. All we're interested in here is how to actually enter the number, or these two values, in fact, into your calculator. So it's actually Ohm's law that we're using, and Ohm's law is that V is equal to I times R. But uh, there is something interesting with this question, and that's that if we completely ignored the prefixes, we actually end up with the correct answer. Now, I'll talk about that later. We wouldn't, even though we end up with the correct answer, we wouldn't get all the marks. So I'll show you the correct way to work this out, first of all. So current is written as the letter I, and the current is 2.0 milli, if you remember the previous slide, is times 10 to the negative 3. And we're multiplying that by resistance, which is 3.0 times 10 to the power of three. So milli is times 10 to the minus three, kilo is times 10 to the power of three. And what we'll do is we'll enter that into a calculator like so. So I've got 2.0 times 10 to the power of three. I just click this button down at the bottom, times 10 to the power of, and it's in fact times 10 to the minus three. So there's the negative button here, negative three. Multiply that by 3.0 and then times 10 to the power of again, but this time it's just three, and that gives us six volts. So in case we didn't know, this is this question is a standard three marker. We would get one mark for the equation, 
we would get one mark for this substitution and we would get one mark for this final answer. If, however, I'd completely ignored the prefixes and instead of writing this, I had just written 2.0 times 3.0, of course, we know that that gives us as well, two times three is going to be six. In fact, I should really write this to the same number of significant figures. I'm going to do that here as well. So I'm going to write that as 6.0. If you're not 100% sure of how many significant figures to write your final answer, there is a video on that one as well, or on that as well. So this method, if I've ignored the prefixes, I still end up with the correct answer. But importantly, this substitution would not be correct because it's not two amps times three ohms, it's two milliamps times three kilo ohms. So I'm afraid we won't get all the marks for this. We won't get three out of three for that method, but we will get three out of three using that method. Now, second example looks like so, and we'll give ourselves more space, move that up. So it says the current in an electrical circuit is measured to be 25 microamps. Now, do you remember what microamps was? That's times 10 to the negative six. Calculate the charge transferred in the circuit in 30 minutes. So the equation we actually use is, and as I said, don't panic if you don't know these equations. Maybe you could get your own calculator out and see if you actually can enter these values and you're getting the same value as me, the same answer as me. So let's see, our current is 25 microamps, which is 25 times 10 to the power of negative six times, well, time is written as 30 minutes, but time should always be written in seconds. So to change 30 minutes to, to seconds, sorry, that would be 30 times 60, and we'll calculate that, and that'll give us the charge. Charge is measured in coulombs. So to enter that number, 25, and then the times 10 to the power of negative six, multiplied by, and I am going to put that time in brackets, so we've got 30 minutes, and each minute has uh, 60 seconds, so 30 times 60, close the bracket, and that gives me this, nine divided by 200. Now, you're not allowed writing a fraction in National Fire Physics, so I'll press the SD button and that gives me 0 0.045, 0 0.045, and as I said, that's in coulombs. Now, luckily, I've gotten the final answer in two significant figures, and I should really be writing in two significant figures because the two numbers in the question, the, this one here, the current, is written to two significant figures, as is time. Now, the last example looks like so. Blue light has a wavelength of 475 nanometers in air. Calculate the frequency of the blue light. Again, I'll give myself more space and I will press all clear in the calculator. Now, for this one, we have to use an equation which is V is equal to F times lambda. So V is the speed, F is frequency, and lambda is wavelength. And we want to rearrange this equation to find F. So how we do that is, I want F on its own, so I'll need to divide this side, because F is being multiplied by lambda, that's wavelength, I want to divide that side by lambda to get F on its own. So because I'm dividing this side by lambda, I'll need to divide the other side by lambda. So I'll get F is equal to V divided by lambda. So F is V over lambda. Now, if you're not sure how to rearrange equations, if you're not really very confident doing that, then look out for the video where I go through lots of examples and you can actually try that for yourself. So it's F is equal to V over lambda, but the V we don't know yet. In fact, that is the speed of light in air, which you'll find in the data sheets at the start of the exam. So that's 3.0 times 10 to the power of eight. Again, we'll need to use that times 10 to the power of button, obviously, to enter that into a calculator. And lambda is the wavelength, which is 475. And hopefully you remember that nano is times 10 to the minus nine. This is going to give a very, very large number. So let's enter that into the calculator. We've got 3.0 times 10 to the power of eight divided by 475 
then times 10 to the power of, of course it's times 10 to the power of negative nine, so the negative button's up here on the left, negative nine, and that gives us this. All right, I'm gonna write this all out right now. Three, one, five, seven, eight, nine, four, seven, four. Move it to the left a bit. Times 10 to the power of 14, and it's actually measured in, this is frequency, it's measured in hertz. Now, you could actually have just rounded this number up uh, as I was writing it. The two numbers which we're actually using for this calculation are the wavelength, which is written to three significant figures, and we've got the speed written to two significant figures. And my final answer should have the same number of figures as the number in the question with the least number of figures. In other words, two. So that can also be written as 6.3. I'm not needing to round up this number because the number after the three is a one. If it was five or more, I would need to round up this second figure. So it's 6.3 times 10 to the power of 14 hertz. There we go. So those are the three examples. Hopefully you've been trying these. If you haven't, you can always go all the way back to the start of the video uh, and try this out for yourself. Make sure that you're getting the same answer as me. Make sure that you know how to change the unrounded number, this one here, to the rounded number, and make sure, of course, that you know how many significant figures you should have in your final answer. If you wrote this as your final answer, you'd actually lose a mark because you would have too many significant figures. Now, there is a video about how to actually round your final answer to an appropriate number of significant figures, so look out for that one. But that's us for now, and we'll see you later.